without further ado, let's look at what's in here. What's Last Tools, what, what can Last Tools offer? So when I get LiDAR, the first thing I usually do, I, I look at it. So there's a tool called Last View. It's not the most amazing um, LiDAR viewer, but it's an ultra lightweight one and it just, uh, it's a way to very quickly inspect some data. So this is how the GUIs work of Last Tools. All these GUIs look exactly the same. I don't use Last Tools through the GUI a lot, but every Last Tool has a GUI. You just double click it and this kind of GUI comes up. At the very top it tells you what kind of tool it is. And on the, on the left side you have a menu that is always the same. It's the same for all of the Last Tools. On the right side you have a menu and that is dedicated for every particular last tool that you're running. And the viewer is sort of a very simple one. You can, with the browse button, you can now go to the example data folder. And there's one thing called FUSA. Um, that doesn't mean what you think it means. <laughs> it means Flinders University of Southern Australia. What were you thinking? Um, so, it, it's a bit disappointing, all you get is this blue box. However, this is because you may load like a thousand tiles into, into here and then you don't want to start loading the points, you just want to get an overview of where your data is because these, these uh, GUIs are meant sort of to be a control center for organizing your computation with last tools. If you actually want to view it, you need to press one more button and then you get another box popping up and this box now tells you what will be executed before you actually execute it. And this is the command line that is actually used for all of the tools. It doesn't matter which, if you use QGIS, ArcGIS, the GUIs. At the very end, there's a command line call like this. And by showing it every time, you're basically starting to learn the command line. You can also go here and modify it once you know the parameters. Um, so let me zoom out again and press start. And now I'm actually start at the viewer. So it's a very simplistic view. It's a very small LiDAR file here. I press P, I can play it back. You see uh, the, li the LiDAR comes in in the, in the order it was acquired by the plane. The LiDAR data is already classified into three different classes, into ground, um, vegetation and building and there's also a bunch of unclassified points which my algorithms don't really know what they what class they should be um, and the viewer has a menu so if you right click you get this menu here and almost everything the viewer can do you can access through this menu However, there's hotkeys, and I was using the hotkeys just now. And uh, if, you, if you look in the menu, the menu te teaches you the hotkeys because it has in brackets one uh, letter, sometimes capitalized. Uh, that's basically the thing you need to uh, you need to press on the keyboard. Um, uh, something that's very new is the possibility to do cross sections. Um, so I can say X. And then I go into this overview mode and now I can draw a cross section here. And I say X again and now I can, I can see only a cross section. And then you can start walking just by using the arrow keys. You can start, start walking through the cross section. And you can also walk here or you walk here. So, and uh, for example, let's look at this area up here. Maybe just this house. So what you see here, you see uh, there's a problem. Uh, and problems often occur along the edges of tiles. Ground classification problems and, uh, and in this case uh, roof classification problems because you see that orange roof of the house is partly classified as vegetation. That is likely that my algorithm made a mistake because it's along the boundary. And that's where mistakes tend to happen. That's why when you do tile-based processing, you always want to have a buffer around the tiles so that 
everything that goes bad happens in that buffer that in the end you cut off again. So uh, there's an, a way to fix that manually. I don't do that very often it's because I tend to process you know millions and billions of points in my workflows but sometimes it's very important to that one particular thing is correct because that's what you're working on. So there's uh, the option to uh, reclassify it. So there's something reclassify as and then we can say building and suddenly you have this crosshair and then I can just draw a polygon and I say now R like register and then these points have been repaired. So these manual edits is not something you want to do for many tiles because it's very time consuming but sometimes it's quite it's just necessary and it's very easy to do now with last few. Um, so and you see now it's it's been fixed. Uh, another thing you can do is let's have a look at this one here. You see here there seems to be an electricity wire. So if you for example you didn't want that, uh, there's also an option to delete points. I press D like delete, and again. I'm making this thing around and I press R like register and then the points are deleted. So these kind of operations are sometimes quite useful and uh, this is very new functionality so I wanted to showcase it here. There's also an, an undo functionality so if you if you say control undo then the points are there and redo then they're gone again. There are many ways of visualizing LiDAR uh, in, in last view. You can either say color by and then there are many ways of coloring, um, for example by elevation, or you can just press C, C like color, and, and iterate through the many different options that are there. And this is one of the options that's uh, something uh, that Chris also showed. It, it colors points based on what kind of returns they are. And I, I use a slightly different coloring than he uses, but I use the same colors. Um, so yellow, that is for single return. So one laser shot and one return. Um, red, that's for the first hit of many. Blue is for the last hit of many. And green, and there's one here, that's for like an intermediate return. So if, that's if you have one laser shot gives you three returns back, and this would be the middle one. And then uh, by pressing F and L, you can look at the first and the last returns. And the single returns are of course both first and last. That's why they're staying there. And you, if you go back and forth, you can almost see the penetration of the laser because you don't really know which red point that's the first return corresponds to which blue point. But there should be one blue point for every red point. So there's, there must be some correspondence also that we don't see the correspondence. Um, it's got to be there somewhere. What's happening here, you wonder? Um, there are all these uh, blue points here. And I think that has to do with control undo with the points we have removed. There, yeah. So we removed these points before. Um, control redo. These were the points that were removed. That's why we didn't see a first return for them. We only saw the last returns, but there were no first returns because the first return, these were the, the wire hits that we removed. So if I say control undo, then I see them again. And now it makes more sense. There are blue points that do have a corresponding red point. We just had removed them in the earlier. Um, what else can you do? You can, um, they're already ground classified, so now I, I pick all the ground points, and you see uh, the ground points are, com it's a combination of first returns and last returns, or it's all last returns, but not every last return is a ground return. Because um, if I go back to the classification, these are now the brown points are all ground points, and I say last, these are all the last returns. So the last returns include a lot of points in the tree. 
If I only look at the ground returns, I can now triangulate the points. Just by pressing T and you get a, a triangulation, a hill shade, and I can walk around and leave, leave it behind. And I can uh, press T again, you always triangulate the, the area you see. Oh, I'm walking out of there. Then let me see where, where I am, or oh, here I am. Maybe I draw something a little bigger. Oh, not quite as big. So now you see, uh, I can also sh change the shading of the triangles. And one interesting thing to look at is the wireframe mode. And I can make the points small to the point where they're very... And uh, so here you see how the interpolation is done um, that before I saw at, uh, at the ground surface. The interpolation method I usually use for LIDAR is just a Delaunay triangulation. That's the one you see here. And when we construct a DTM, we just sample that Delaunay triangulation uh, at the centers of every raster cell. Um, it usually doesn't look so nice where you have buildings, and that's because the lasers we use do not penetrate through buildings to the ground. Uh, you know, they're not the James Bond kind of lasers. Um, so it, it sometimes doesn't look so nice, but that's because you know we have to interpolate across these voids, uh, and we don't have any data there. Um, do you know what, what this is here? Well, we have these funny boots. Yeah, these are cars because this was a building and there's a parking lot, and uh, and you can uh, you can see very clearly. Uh, you know that's where my sister parked her car. <laughs> Um, yeah, so this kind of inspection of LiDAR is, is quite nice with last view. Um, if I look at all points again, there's many little options that you can play around with to understand your LiDAR. That's usually the first thing I encourage people to do. There's something called drop lines. You know, you, you hang a two meter line on every point. It's useful sometimes to inspect something. Uh, it gives you a, a sense of scale inside of the scene. And. Uh, So now I'm looking at all the points again. I guess I, I can look only at the ground and the building. I can triangulate them. Now I, I make the point size zero and I go through different shading modes. And I should turn off the drop lines. Drop lines, none. And then you can, you can add all points again and and uh, or only the vegetation points and color them so they look like vegetation. Or you can just compare how the, the, the building was, uh, you know, taken, uh, looking only at the ground points in the buildings and comparing that to how it looks like when you have the vegetation points as well. This would be what we call the DSM. So uh, last view is just an inspection tool, and of course you can do the little editing operations I showed you. That's, for quality checking, a quite a useful tool.